Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Community Preservation Committee meeting of April 15, 2014. Tonight in, uh, on, the, uh, on the agenda, we have uh, seated Gary Fowler, Peter Burns, myself, I'm Harry Lacatilla, James Demento, and Paul Nelson. Uh, having the quorum now at 7.40 p.m., I'm calling the meeting to order, and I'm going to skip over the payment of bills and all the usual order of business because there's folks in the audience, and we have some town officials here. And what I'm going to go to directly is a, the presentation of uh, all of the community preservation articles that uh, the Community Preservation Committee is recommending to town meeting uh, for what is it, May 5th. And without any further ado, uh, the way this works, there are three core categories for the Community Preservation Act, uh, community housing, historic preservation, and open space. Open space, ever since 2012, change of the legislature incorporates both uh, what we commonly think of as conservation land as well as active recreational land now. Uh, the first thing we usually do at town meeting is we ask everyone to reserve 10% of the community preservation receipts in the match uh, for each of those three core categories. You have to put a minimum of 10% in the kitty, so to speak, so that you have it for, uh, that way none of the, those projects of those core categories are ever uh, forgotten about. Uh, as it says, once the reservations are made, the voters decide whether to approve or reject the projects that the local community preservation committees recommended for the upcoming year. This year is a little different. We have a bond allocation and a payment. At the annual town meeting held on May 6, 2013, the town approved bonding from CPA funds to pay for the high school field's rehabilitation and for the conservation restriction for Wheeler Brook Farm. In order to make payments for the bond acquisition costs and the, and the debt service, the town voters will also be asked to approve the necessary funding through an annual appropriation. We have to pay it back so much a year uh, at the same time that we're making the reservations. It just makes sense to put the money into an account so that the town treasurer, the town uh, accountant can make payments when the bonds come due. Uh, this year, the committee recommended 250000 to provide for the debt service and all the other associated costs for the bonds for those articles at last year's town meeting. Uh, and this year, in public meetings, we reviewed and we, met, we came up with all the suggested projects that we thought we, we should fund this year. Out of them, we recommend these. Out of the community housing category project, uh, community housing, affordable housing trust, CPC grant, 2014, I'm going to turn it over to Paul Nelson from the Affordable Housing Task Trust. Force. Trust. Actually, Trust and Task Trust Force. Trust and Task Force. We got a double. So this is interactive. If you have any questions, please speak up. And you're going to have to tell me when to click. Okay. Uh, click. Okay. I click. So the Affordable Housing Trust, it basically, uh, this is a set of our, our high-level goals. What we're trying to do is maintain the status of the current affordable units we have in town, which is not a whole lot. Uh, there's like three houses and then uh, a number of, uh, of apartments that are affordable. Uh, capitalize on opportunities to create new owner and rental housing. Uh, our key is really to increase the houses that go on something called the SHI, Subsidized Housing Inventory. If you fall below, below 20% or 10%, then you are subject to 40B. So that's something where we don't want to be and plus we want to build what we think is necessary and aid resi residents in buying or renting housing. And click. click. Are you going to click, <laughs> Did you just hit the return or something? Oops. OK. Middle button. So the, should this be going? Yeah, hang on a second. Let me, let me get that. He's trying to do too many things. He's well, uh, on away. the home screen, there's a, there's a key over there. Sorry. My apologies. There you go, Paul. Sorry. Paul. Okay. That's our Bible. That was created uh, by LDS Consulting back in, at the end of 2011. It's in a, a state-accepted housing production plan. Every town in, in Massachusetts is supposed to have one. Many of them don't, but we do. Uh, and the person that did it did a, a bang-up job. We have a lot of strategies that we need to accomplish, or strategies to use and goals to accomplish. Click. 
And housing production plan uh, basically is a driver for the Affordable Housing Trust, which is what I'm representing tonight, but also an organization called the Affordable Housing Task Force, which is like the leg men for the Affordable Housing Trust. They're the ones that actually go out and do the legwork. Um, basically, at this point in time, if you look at where we're at in Georgetown, there is an estimated 75 plus families living at or below the poverty level. Uh, we're not sure exactly where they're living, or we know where some are, but, but not all, for sure. 75 seems a high number, but that's, that's what they came up with. There's also significant demand for all types of rental housing. That is, that is really the, the prime issue. Um, rental is, is where uh, people that, that are in, uh, uh, say, the 50% the of AMI, of average medium income, that's what they really need. Uh, most of them, if you try to put them into a house, they can't afford the maintenance on a house. So rentals are really highly desirable from that perspective. There's also a demand for starter homes for the younger households. I mean, people that are or developers that come in and, and build $700,000 houses, these are not anything that's appropriate to a new family starting out. And lastly, there's a demand for the elderly housing uh, where they can have an ability to actually age in place, something that's not too big, uh, not too small, but they can maintain and they can live there. Click. So this is, uh, if you look at the housing production plan on the left, that's what was available for housing in 2011. There were essentially uh, 10 family uh, rental units. There was uh, um, like 126 senior disabled. And these are uh, primarily trestle way, but there's, uh, there's also uh, some other units uh, that are, that are uh, controlled by the state. We can see them, but we don't do anything with them. Um, Ownership-wise, there's five houses, and uh, then senior disabled, that would be Pulte Homes, there's six. And there's really been no increase in affordable housing units since like 2009, and I just wagged 2009. I know it was, n that's, there wasn't anything since then, I think it goes back further. Um, the housing need in 2014, there's an elderly waiting list of 61. Actually, uh, that's come down considerably since last year. Last year it was over 100. Uh, there's a family waiting list of 239, um, and that's gone up. Uh, that is where the, the prime need is right now, and it, it's, it's a tough to satisfy because a single, ve single bedroom uh, unit does not take care of a family. It's got to be at least two bedrooms, and those are tough to come by. Click. So then we come into The Affordable Housing Trust uh, basically was set up several years ago, and our charter, uh, if you look at it, it looks like a lot of it identifying a lot of the functions you find in a standard bank. Uh, we can borrow money, we can lend money, we can buy, buy properties, we can sell properties. We use the, the facilities of the, of the town for the actual banking, but the actual powers there, uh, the fiduciary powers are in the, in the uh, trust. For instance, uh, Housing authority, like us, gets money from uh, the CPC, uh, but it's only allocated once a year. And there's been a couple times now uh, where the housing authority has asked the trust for money simply because they needed it for something that happened uh, outside of the cycle for CPC. And uh, we could provide that then. We have something going uh, called the Rental Assistance Program, which is moderately <coughs> successful. We have five or six. Um, and it's a temporary program, but for up to two years, uh, somebody can get rental assistance depending on what their need is and where they happen to be living. We've actually uh, uh, owned part of a, an agent of the trust. We have 20 percent of the, of the uh, planning board agent that he functions as, as our agent also. We actually also have a secured professional assistance to, like, for designing the re re rental assistance program. Uh, and we use them periodically. And we established partnership uh, with um, a couple of different housing providers and agencies. Um, it hasn't really blossomed in anything yet, but it, you have to do the groundwork. 
Click. Okay, 2014, where we want to go. Uh, we want to continue uh, e evolving a, a strategic alliance with uh, not-for-profit not developers. Uh, Harbor-like communities is one we've started working with now, and they seem to be very amenable to doing the kind of things we'd like to do here in Georgetown. Continue the rental, rental assistance program for those that are qualified. Uh, we're also looking to, to pursue some land acquisition. Uh, that's very handy. Uh, if you're going to build, uh, say you want to build an affordable rental uh, set of condos or something of that nature, if you can go to the nonprofit with the land, uh, you're way ahead of the game. It means that, that uh, rather than just all market rate units, you can say uh, we want n number of a certain percentage of, of affordable units and you have the leverage to make it happen. We're also going to look at it, uh, investigating a, a down payment assistance program. This, these work Primarily, uh, when somebody's trying to get into a house uh, and they're moderate to low income, uh, this is a way of, of aiding them to get into that property. Uh, it's good in a sense that it, it helps somebody that, that really needs to, to get there. Uh, the downside to it is it doesn't help us at all on uh, the subsidized housing uh, list. Um, we're looking at a way of getting around that. Um, there might be a way of, of doing, doing both, getting on the SA giant and actually providing some down payment. But that's something we want to look at in 2014. And we want to extend our infrastructure. Like I say, right now we have 20% of a one person that's supposed to be doing all of our, our professional work. Uh, and a number of us go to different seminars and things of that nature, but we're not, we don't have the connections or the, or the knowledge of all of the, the ins and outs of, of the uh, the DHCD and various state, state agencies that, that people that work in it for their life, for their uh, career, do have. So we're looking at, at uh, extending our infrastructure into probably um, at least somebody we'd have on call. Um, so if we wanted to do some monitoring of a, a particular set of houses or something like that, we'd know who to call, they would know us, all the, all the pieces would be in place so it would be very easy to make it happen. And then uh, lastly, what we do is uh, we'll extend, uh, we'll, we'll continue being uh, the funding unit for executing op op opportunities uh, for local, uh, like Trestle Way, that people that, that need funding out of cycle. That's kind of it. That's what you're spending your money on. Um, just want to say a very complicated, very deep subject. Uh, are there any questions that anybody has? I am going to move over to that seat because I'm going to hurt my neck. Oh, you're going to break your neck doing <laughs> doing the neck, but uh, that's why I didn't question. sit there. Mm -hmm. Sure. Good question, um, Julia. Back. Um, I remember getting a flyer in the mail last year because I remember last year at the public hearing, I believe it was from the Affordable Housing Trust. Could you guys send out a bunch of mailers? I mean, yes. I own a property that um, yes. had a yes. rental property upstairs. Did that only go out to people that had rental properties? Right. All right. We went to the assessor's list, uh, assessor's office, and got a list of all of the people that that we thought were were landlords, and mm -hmm. sent that out. Uh, it, the list wasn't complete, or or. Did you get any bites on that? Yes, we did. Areas? We had uh, we had a little. Uh, there was a meeting where both uh, potential renters and potential landlords could attend, and and we had one landlord that showed up. Uh, actually, there were several others that <coughs> called, uh, so we did get some response. Uh, but quite frankly, there's not a lot of rentals uh, that are available in Georgetown. Mm -hmm. uh, the most, uh, where you'll find the most activity is over Longview. So, which is. Uh, Where's Longview? That's the apartments. On the, on the highway. On yeah, the highway. but okay. but their their pricing is is way out of uh, what they would consider far, fair market rentals. So it, you have to play games to, to do anything over there. Mm -hmm. So, are you planning on doing the mailers again this year? No, that was a, a one shot. Or uh, it, it's I don't I suspect the assessors list hasn't changed dramatically. Mm -hmm. uh, so we could maybe look at it at uh, if there's any any new additions and see and send it out to them mm -hmm. but we've tried had our ear to the ground and I don't think anything has come up for rent that we don't know about 
could be wrong, but we, we I knew at the Housing Authority we finally had to cut our list. Like I saw 239 families are needing affordable housing and yeah. through Housing Authority it's not only elderly but families in need as well, Yeah. whether they have someone with a disability or financial reasons. And um, I mean, we only have on Jewett Street, what, six units yeah. for family house, yeah. affordable family housing, six units in Georgetown. So yeah. There's actually a few more too, but they're, they're well, scattered just like around. Housing authority yeah, only, yeah. But I'm sure there's others. Yeah. yeah, but it is. It's it's tough, and, and creating rentals is is difficult. Uh, but you, if you're going to do that, you have to have the infra infrastructure in place because it requires somebody's got to screen a candidate, somebody's got to monitor the activities that's going on. It, it's you're in in the housing business when you do that. Mm -hmm. but. Well, good luck. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Any other Sorry, questions? my rental property is no longer available. Oh, well, we renovated. Uh, any other questions? I'm going to move right along then, and we'll go to the historical category projects. Um, I see uh, Don Cudmore, Peter Durkee, and Roger McCauley. If you could join us, guys, that would be great because, uh, well, you know why? Because uh, this is about the Union Cemetery and Harry Merch, flag, Harry Merch Park flagpoles. <coughs> Good evening. Good evening. I apologize for the sniffles. I have a cold like everybody else. <coughs> that time of year. It is. Um, which one's first, the Union Cemetery? Uh, the Union Cemetery. Uh, the Union Cemetery, absolutely. Okay, as, as this committee knows and others know that uh, uh, the town's done a wonderful job with the uh, renovations and, and uh, upkeep of the Union Cemetery as of late with signage, fences. We've redone the headstones. The landscape's looking really nice. But... Uh, uh, I have noticed and others have noticed that the flagpole that's on the property is uh, is aged, it's bent, and it's not size appropriate to the uh, uh, to the flag nor the pole that's there. And with the significance of the historics of the cemetery and the folks who are buried there in our town, it's a relatively simple project of $800 to replace that pole. Um, Do you want me to switch the slide? If you'd like, sure. Uh, th th there's there's the pole there, and you can see that it uh, um, it doesn't have the appropriate flag size on it, and it's obviously uh, uh, bent in the middle. So um, you can you can run right through the slides just to show people um, the replaced uh, the replacement pole will be a 25 foot white fiberglass pole with a four by six nylon flag, which is size appropriate for that, and a solar lighting kit that will be put on the top. Go ahead, and it's not going to cost us anything to put it in because my good friend Peter Durkee here and his staff and, and machinery will uh, uh, remove the old flagpole and uh, replace the new one. And if we need the uh, work of the light department, Dave Schofield, our manager, has also offered his services. So uh, there's, there, there, there's no labor cost there for the replacement. Uh, I'll monitor the project if you need somebody to monitor the project. We've put in a couple of flagpoles ourselves, and uh, uh, as, as Peter's put in the biggest flagpoles in the town, so I don't think it's a big, uh, big project for his staff either. And that's it. Great. Um, and just just so you know and everybody else knows, because of the flagpoles and uh, the, the what we did was we, we combined these together into one because it just seems like it's all going to meld into one and it's really all going to fall into Peter anyway. So That's uh, great. <laughs> with, with, with that in mind, the Merchant Marine flagpole installation at Harry Merch Park, Peter or Roger, uh, buck up or <coughs> jump in. Click. Okay. Um, the Merchant Marine veterans uh, are not represented uh, at our Veterans Park with a flagpole. All of the other services are. Uh, they were declared veterans in 1988 by President Clinton. This would be the layout that I propose to add the flagpole, which is shown in red. Uh, it would just make a nice V. Uh, we also want to add the emblem to the stone on the right, uh, left-hand side. Uh, the front of the stone facing the American flag, which is up at the top, is full. So we propose to put the Merchant Marine emblem on the uh, back side of that stone facing the service flagpoles. Cool. Yep. <coughs> um, <coughs> this is the flag for the Merchant Marine. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. Uh, <clears throat> the Merchant Marine is represented at the National World War II 
Memorial in Washington, D.C. There are two American flags and the Merchant Marine emblem along with the other services are at the base of those flags and this is a picture of that particular emblem. And that's also the emblem that we would put on <coughs> the stone. Um, the flagpole would be 35 foot, 7 inch diameter, white fiberglass with a 70 feet of number two solid braided rope, and two vinyl coated snap hooks. That would be $1,800. The flag's $200. Engraving the stone is $900. And the labor for the installation, if Peter is so inclined, would be zero. If not, it would be about $1,000. So it's $2,900 or $3,900 if Peter can't do it. Go ahead. You'll do it, right? Yep. Thank you, Pete. Um, <clears throat> this is just um, a little bit of the history. Uh, I've already told you the first two. Uh, during World War II, 1,554 U.S. flag merchant ships uh, were lost, and one out of every 26 merchant mariners were lost due to the war. And, and that's a higher percentage rate than any of the other services. Uh, they, Merchant Marine, carried all of the men, materials, and supplies to fight in every theater throughout the world, and also carried all of the raw materials to, uh, for the American war production effort. Uh, at the beginning of the war, the Merchant Marine uh, put, put to sea without any means of protection. Uh, some of the lucky ships had a, five, uh, a telephone pole painted gray mounted on the bow to make the Germans think that they were armed. Uh, merchant mariners sailing their ships along the coast were sitting ducks for the German U-boats until the coastal blackouts were ordered and convoys were established. And that took a while because the Admiral uh, wasn't inclined to do so because he didn't like the British and the British told him he should do that. Uh, the Merchant Marine veterans put to sea with the knowledge that they were expendable. If their ships were torpedoed in convoys, the other ships were ordered not to stop to rescue survivors. If a ship faulted due to mechanical difficulties, the convoy continued on and they were left to survive on their own. Um, <clears throat> the Merchant Marine uh, Lieutenant Clarence M. Wright Rice of Georgetown, Mass., was killed in World War II, and his name is listed on the granite stone in Harry Merch Park. Um, that's that it. Was the last of yeah, they were a little out of order from what I would have thought. But oh, that's you okay. did a good job, Roger. Any questions? Questions? Thank you, folks. Thank you. Uh, thank, thank you very much. Peter, you might want to hang one second. I'm just going to get notes. Oh, you have some notes? Uh, Peter's going to present the... Uh, <laughs> Let me add one, one additional item. By all means. The American Legion and the Veterans of Foreign War and the Georgetown Kiwanis were the group that are behind getting this flagpole to put in. So this is Peter's flags now? Is that his enemy? Peter's flag. I'm going to call you the flag man. Okay. I want to call him man. to work on a railroad. Can't call him. <coughs> uh, Peter, uh, Peter's going to tell us about Pond Street. Not in uh, mixed company. But uh, most people know as the uh, the Pond Street fence removal is actually the Pond Street Pentucket Pond Vista View restoration. Uh, next slide. Certainly, sir. Next slide. Um, this is the existing fence um, along the Pond Street near the pond. It separates the the roadway from the pond. It's a six foot high galvanized fence. Um, to do the, the notice of intent, the wetlands flagging, and a plan to put in the guardrail would um, roughly be $20,000. You can go to the next slide. Um, we would replace the fence with this type of guardrail here. It, um, there was talk about you know, use of wood guardrail, but um, the speed limit on that road is 30 miles an hour, and wood guardrail shouldn't be used over 25. And one thing I don't like wood god real because it, it doesn't last and we don't have you know money year after year to replace god rail this will last and until it's hit and then if it's hit we find out who hit it um, if at all possible and, and the insurance will cover it you can go to the um, next slide um, this is a crash test tested tangent end that we would put in for um, 
an opening so people could walk to the pond and you know right now there's no way to get to the pond except if you walk down by Lake Ave Thank you. and um, the construction cost for us to remove the fence um, we have to extend the, um, the um, shoulder a little bit to, so we can put the new guardrail in or a company can put the new guardrail in and that you know the highway department cost would be around ten thousand dollars and and that's a rough estimate and the total cost with the contingency would be sixty two thousand dollars right i i just want to mention one thing peter if, if you're done yeah uh before any questions i want to mention that uh there, there's uh, there's been a lot of talk and my understanding is that um, um gary you were explaining it um there, there's been a, um, a request put into the state budget. Lenny Mara put it on. Uh, yeah, it's actually Mira it passed it the House or the Senate. I forget one of the houses. Yeah, passed them both. Passed yes, them both. Passed and them I both. think it's waiting for the governor's signature, and okay. who knows if that's going to happen. Right, because the governor does have line item veto. Yep. Um, the the way this works, the, the CPC recommended this project because uh, with a with a little uh, sundown clause of about eight months, <coughs> and the reason we did that was because we recognized that. Either the state is going to pay it or the state isn't going to pay it. And the other possibility is the state may pay it, but they may not come up with enough money for it. They may cut, cut back on the amount of money it's actually going to take to do the job. Um, if the town votes, the town voters vote to put the 62000 in an, uh, a reserve account, in an account for this appropriation, what will happen is if the state pays for it, Peter will use that money, and this money will rotate back into the historical account uh, just by a vote of this board, just so everybody knows. Uh, in the event that the town either doesn't come up with enough money, uh, excuse me, that the state doesn't come up with enough money, we could use the monies from this to augment it and be able to do the project. And of course, the third possibility is the state um, just doesn't come up with the money, in which case Peter could use this to use to, to put the, get rid of the fence. So are there any questions? Yes, sir. Peter and Harry, where we left off last time, uh, we're going to uh, have the selectmen uh, send a letter to the uh, District District 3 DOT and uh, have the state District have a look four. at it's this District 4. Yeah. What, what, uh, what, what became of that? Um, I, I talked to District 4, and District 4 will take, you know, they'll do something with like a numbered route, 133 and 97, but, you know, this is town owned. They're not going to come out and, and do anything, and they're not going to do any, any engineering. You know, for this project. Mm -hmm. yeah. Excuse me. Didn't didn't they put it in? Didn't the state put it in? I, I don't believe the state put this in. No. Jack put it in. Jack I would say Holdridge you know they put the dam in. Wasn't that a FEMA? It, I'm not yeah. sure. I, I, I thought it was some money they got when we It, it could have been that FEMA. That it could have been flood. Chapter 90. I know they they um, redid the dam. With the flume, right. and, yeah. and, yeah. and then yeah. all yeah. all this got put into. Right. So, huh. you know, we may be able to use the fence that's existing someplace else. Um, who knows? You know, we're not going to just you know tear it out of there. We're going to undo it and and try to pull the pipes out individually so we can just break the cement off and maybe you know down the road there's a place we can put it. I don't know mm -hmm. what the dog fences dog park's going to look like, but I, if it has that type of fence, you could. So, yep. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a heck of a fence. I hate to see it go to waste. Yeah, we're not gonna we're not gonna damage it when we take it out. So. Yeah. Sounds good. Um, Peter, thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate you taking the time. Sorry we took. Over. Nope, not a problem. Have a good night. Thank you. Uh, this is the open space category project, and this is the third category. Uh, this is the Georgetown Park and and Recreation. CTC request for the rehabilitation of American Legion Park. And Juliet, want to join us up here? Please. Tell me when to click. Please. All right. For your <laughs> new, since I last presented for phase one, and I think you'd ask for some pictures, so I brought some in case anyone wants to see them. Thanks. Um, basically, we're asking for phase two. Go backwards, Juliet. Just, because, I just want to go backwards until, <laughs> sure. the, until the screen changes for the, um, on the, the screen so people can see it. Screen changes. Stay at home can see it. And there we go. Give them a chance to read it. And there you go, Juliet. My apologies. So here's phase two or part two of phase one, however you want to call it. 
Um, just to give you an overview, this is what we had asked for from the town last year that was voted in already by town voters. It was $135,000 that we have secured, $110,000 for the playground, $25,000 for the pavilion. The bid was awarded to Georgetown Ironworks. Construction is actually starting tomorrow down at American Legion Park, if anyone wants to go take a look. And it went local, so we're very happy about that. Just a brief overview of what the pavilion's going to look like right there, 20 by 26 foot with an all galvanized steel with a hip and style roof. It's going to be nice. Concrete pad floor, ADA accessible. It will have a lip. Um, slanted down on all sides so wheelchairs, strollers can get up in there, and it's going to fit six picnic tables. And anyone in Georgetown is able to use that for picnics. It'll be nice. Uh, the 110000 that we're keeping secured for the playground is uh, basically to tear down almost everything except for the big castle. If you're familiar with the playground in the upper back corner for the, where the older kids are, that's the 5 to 12 section is going to stay. Everything else is being taken out, and 110000 is going to pay for purchase and delivery of new equipment, or at least a, a good chunk to get us started, and then future additions to the playground will be... Uh, either future fundraising aside from CPC or maybe in the future through CPC. We'll just see how it goes. Uh, this is also going to um, purchase the, the um, freight and uh, the actual wood fiber safety surfacing, which is going to be 12 inches, and that's to secure the fall zone. So our playground equipment can be up to 8 feet high uh, with 12 inches of wood fiber safety surfacing, and that's a community build with professional supervision. So whichever company ends up getting the bid on the playground equipment will provide professional supervision. And we're assuming about 45, 55 volunteers will come out, probably about 50 in the background on the side too to help build this. So it's still going as a community build. So this is what's already awarded. This is what we're asking for this year to help get us going. Uh, once we really dug into this project and talked to a lot of uh, different people with the town, we just, as most projects change a little bit, uh, we're asking to secure some more money to help really get this project going. Um, permitting process required by Conservation Commission. The playground is now a floodplain, which it wasn't when it was built. So um, being that it's a floodplain and we're going to be removing some trees for new construction, it's requiring a permit from the Conservation Commission. Um, the demolition and disposal of old equipment and construction materials is going to go out what we would like to call a professional demolition. Um, after talking to different people in town and just due to insurance reasons, we don't want anyone getting hurt. Um, this is old, heavy equipment and telephone poles. It has, we found out there's kerosene all on the underneath part that's underground of the wood equipment, which is uh, not safe to be around anyone really. <laughs> and uh, just who knows what's in all that equipment. So um, we've talked to a couple different people about the pricing of the demo to haul all the old equipment away. And then um, a big chunk of this money is for site prep for installation of the new equipment and the wood carpet safety surfacing, securing tools, bobcats, forklifts, backhoes, all that to um, get everything taken out and then to grade. Conservation Commission has some restrictions on us as far as drainage and being that it's wetlands and floodplain on getting the surface uh, graded evenly and uh, getting it ready for the new stuff to go down, purchasing plastic border timbers. We had talked about wooden railroad ties last time we presented this project. We've thus decided Park and Rec to go with the plastic border timbers, has a much longer lifeline, as um, Peter had mentioned too about the wooden guardrails, and then we're not going to have splinters or anything. They're easier to move around, and they're not that much more expensive at all. Um, total engineered cost based on preliminary site plan, equipment design, engineering services, and permitting process per Conservation Commission. The only reason we put that is we really don't know any exact numbers until this goes through uh, Conservation Commission. As we all know, things can change, and um, we're not sure exactly how much money it's going to take us to get our permits through Conservation Commission and get going. I'll go a little more into that. Next, please. Well, Peter added 20 for the for the for the Pond, Pond Street thing. So. <laughs> That's not part of mine. <laughs> um, permitting process. Um, it does say at the bottom we did go ahead and sign a contract and go ahead and hire an engineer to take care of this for us. Um, since I'm not a wetland science engineer, <laughs> um, 
Vaclav Talatko at Hancock Engineering has uh, signed the contract with the town to get this done, and he is actually supposed to start work within the next couple weeks. We had signed the contract over the winter, and with so much snow, we couldn't get started. Basically, we broke down what needs to be done to get our permit from Conservation Commission. Wetland delineation, topographic plan, permit, site plan, notice of intent, public hearing, approval process services, and request for certificate of compliance. One thing you're going to run into, when I was on a CONCOM, we were doing some work in that area, and <coughs> one of the things we ran into is there's a lot of erosion from the sand, and it's coming from the upper part of the playground. Mm -hmm. The water there doesn't, it doesn't have a good channel for getting out to the pond without uh, going over the beach. Is that going to be part of uh, this pro I hope this is part of this project. You're going to lose a lot of lower level. Um, I'm not exactly sure all those questions. I'm not real confident answering that without having the engineer here. I know that Conservation Commission, you know, they're very strict in our town. Um, you know, I, I would have faith that they're going to they're going to make sure they put some restrictions on us. Mm -hmm. I know we do have to do a silt fence and hay bales all in the upper section. That's just for the, the construction. Um, so is there money built in there, though, to do uh, the, uh, uh, the road um, control? I'll go a little more into that once okay. we uh, get to that slide. Um, oh, I, I do know that, sure, you can go ahead and click it. Um, OK, so um, project over demolition and disposal of old equipment and construction materials, site prep for installation of new equipment and wood carpet safety surfacing. Here's a basic breakdown of how we came up with that $29,000. Three days work to remove, dispose of existing playground structures, surface grading for drainage requirements, and install silt fence equipment and tools, and as well as labor. Supplies needed to install silt fence and hay bales, miscellaneous loam seed and fill to grade surface and refurbish disturbed areas. Remove and disposal of all old tires from playground. There's over 150 tires there. It's a lot of money. Uh, one day's work to remove five trees, light and heavy equipment, rental, and labor. Removal of five tree stumps, light and heavy equipment rental, and labor. And two days work to dig holes for post installation, bobcat and auger bit equipment, rental and labor. And there's some that's cut off on that slide. Let me see. And then cement needed for concrete footings this and post there. installation. It's down there. <laughs> which is quite a bit of cement as well. We'll probably be just renting a cement truck to come pour that out. There's going to be over 100 posts that are going to need to be dug out. So um, maybe to answer your question a little bit right there when you were talking about um, we will have to take care of any disturbed areas, definitely from what we take out. Um, I, I don't really know how to answer your question as far as what the runoff is there. Do you, do you yeah, Jim? No, I think, the yeah. I think, I think part of the increase. We've gone round and round on this before. No, I think part of the increase in cost was basically when we met with the Conservation Commission yeah. and it became, you know, first they wanted us to remove the, the lighthouse, the light, the foundation from the old, the old ice house hmm. to, and the historical one, I, I wasn't ha pleased with that because it's a historical still has some historical value, seeing one of the old ice houses. So we decided we're going to hire an engineer, and the engineer is going to go to, to the Conservation Commission, and they're going to talk about ideas to mitigate that. But I wasn't going to go to the Conservation Commission with my ideas to mitigate it. So that became when we decided we needed to hire an engineer, hence we knew they'd be eating up some of, this, some of the money. We would have money, enough money in the budget for the playground area. Yeah, it just uh, so, so I agree there is, there is some water issues. And that's going to be done with great, you know, the engineer's going to have to take a look at that with Steve and come up with a solution. Yeah, then, but and that's part of the reason why this extra money is being asked mm -hmm. for. If they said we like everything and guys can start tomorrow, we wouldn't have asked for this money. Yeah, no, it, it's, it's just, uh, it is something that needs to be done because we try to put a swale in to actually vector the water out yeah. over to the swamp, and that didn't work well because we didn't dig mm -hmm. it deep enough. And so all of the water flow that comes down from, from, that it's actually a hill that's coming right downhill and it's going out into the beach and, and you lose all of your sand out to the... Mm -hmm. what, what I will say is, um, yeah, I'm not sure. And, and this project is really just for the actual, basically if you think of a big square in the upper section yeah. of age 5 to 12 and a square for age 2 to 5 in the lower, we're really just dealing with that square and what's inside of that square and any area we disturb we're going to, yeah. you know, regrade. I don't really know if our project really is anything else outside of that. Potentially, I'm only saying this potentially. If you look at, because we, we, ha we have some schematics of what the 
remember this the top section is almost 100 percent sand up there the square yeah. footage could slightly decrease and, and the, the perimeter can now be put something else more permeable we could put there's you know we're not going to possibly use every inch of that top area and bottom area because these playground areas are more condensed, I would call them centralized play stations type of design. These are ideas that are going to come up with the notice of intent and the engineers. Yeah. The engineer is going to show them the concept, and um, maybe we should ask for more because if they keep on going after it for two years, we we'll, might come back next year for more engineering. I'd be like, very surprised if they don't. No, I'm sure. Yeah. No, I'm sure Vashek, Vashek put in the infiltration system originally. That's one of the reasons he's yeah. been picked. Well, that's one of the reasons I suggested him for this project because he. Put the original infiltration system, which, which overflows, which we told, which we told, yeah. we told everybody we thought they were undersized, and everybody told us no, they were fine, yeah. and they overflow because I grew up in that area. I know, I know what what a water in that area is like yeah. during a rainstorm. It's, pretty it's 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 good what you're doing. It's just that you might as well fix that since you're into it. I believe. And I think the stormwater runoff is something you believe have that's to calculate the first anyway. thing. That's the first yeah. thing Steve talked to us about. Yep. What if? So <laughs> it doesn't like you. It doesn't like you surprised anybody because that's. Yeah. And that was the first conversation we had with Steve. He said, you got some water issues here. And he said, okay, let's. And, you know, it's all sand, upper and lower. The re we're not keeping the sand. Sand is only a four-foot fall zone, so nothing could be over four feet tall if, it, if we kept the sand. Yeah. What's there is not to code anymore. It's not playground approved anymore. Um, so, you know, a lot of that area is going to have those plastic border timbers or railroad ties, whatever you want to call it around it with the 12 inches of the um, wood fiber, which is basically like a mulch that intertwines, which will be permeable. But at least that's not going to run off. That's all going to be completely contained in the upper Right. The upper stuff the is not where the erosion, that's where the water came from, but all the damage was done down, mm. down lower. Yeah. Well, I'm sure. Yeah. 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 I don't know. Will I'm sure that could be a huge Steve amount of money and a whole other project. Yeah. I'm sure that'll all be handled. It's good that you're doing it, though. That, that Thank you. Take care of that, too. <laughs> Next, please. Absolutely. Um, purchase a six-foot border timbers, landscape stakes. This is just a, a ballpark estimate based on what the site plan, once we get talking with the engineer and decide exactly. We're probably going to over-permit for room to grow with the playground. The playground will be smaller at first, and then, but we will permit the entire lower and the entire upper with future room to grow so we don't have to go through all this again with the town. Um, and the installation of the timbers will also have an option of community build, which we are going to push for so we don't have to pay for labor to install the timbers. If we can get some volunteers that know what they're doing, that can go out for free. And um, this estimate is based on preliminary design and permanent site plan once again. And that's it next. I think that's it. That's it. Um, for anyone who was interested, you know, in a breakdown, um, CPC does have that on file. I do have some numbers here of exactly how we came up with that. All these numbers for the estimate of everything we just presented came to 24800 and we're actually asking the town for 29800 an additional $5,000, so we don't run into what we ran into last year. We're trying to give ourselves a $5,000 cushion. Again, like Carrie had mentioned with the other project, if it's not used, it's returned back to the town, to CPC. Um, but there's, we're anticipating with a community build uh, many different factors to go into place, or as you had mentioned with the, um, with the being um, a floodplain and stuff, uh, you know, the contract we signed with Varshek was for so many, me so many meetings with Conservation Commission, so. So we that area is listed in to, as a floodplain right now, but I contest whether it actually is a floodplain. And we could actually, as part of this money, get it surveyed and removed from the floodplain. Because if you look how high the, the actual top section has got to be 20 feet above the pond, and if that floods, then we're all floating away. Is it mm -hmm. high is Here's some photos. I'll just pass them around. It, it, this is all recycled products too. Yeah, there's some sections of the floodplain that the whole you the whole pass those around that? whole Bartlett Street is is also considered in the floodplain, which I floodplain I don't think was exactly what you trade in those areas. Exactly. Which people you can go and you can get it removed from the floodplain. If you guys want to see these too, you're welcome to. There's some designs of what the playground's gonna might look like. So do you haven't chosen this? 
Um, we are going to wait until we have a permit in our hand from Conservation Commission. Once the permit is in our hand, we have spoken to many different playground engineers, had them come and talk with Park and Rec over the past two years. And these are just some preliminary designs of all recycled products, ADA compliant, and the surfacing will also be ADA compliant and be able to um, take a wheelchair rolling over it of what it could look like. And one of the things now is we, have, for years, have had the um, young kids in the summer come down there and use it. Yep. That's becoming an issue with the school not being able to bring the kids down. And it is not ADA compliant at this time, the playground, yep. and it will be when we are done. So. Estimated timeline, in case anyone was wanting to know, um, the pavilion is going up this week, uh, the roof probably in a couple weeks on the pavilion. Um, the engineer is starting on the wetland science in the next couple weeks, hopefully. Uh, we're hoping to get this through ComCom by the end of the summer, and um, our notice of intent filed certificate of compliance. We're going to ballpark by the end of the summer having the permit in our hand, which will be kind of nice because that will give us the entire fall and winter to talk with potential bidders, look at playground designs, put this project out to bid, however we decide to do it in RFP and RFQ or to purchase off the state bid list, and select someone in a design, and then hopefully early spring, first, as soon as the snow melts, do the demo, like this time next year, and then um, construction by the end of the spring. So we're hoping as soon as school lets out next year, this playground will be built. So that's our ballpark timeline. Fantastic. Thank you, Julia. Yeah. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Question from the audience. Uh, I noticed there was no monies in there for <coughs> repairs to the ice house pavilion, the bandstand. No, this project no. does not include the bandstand. I will be putting in, prob I will possibly this year because there needs to be painted. There's actually some rust in the posts, the trusses. I think the roof needs some work too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Actually, we talked about that in a meeting. What would be a potential next CPC thing to do? Yeah. Which we're would be all a mini in agreement. Well, also, you know, if you know, the building has some T1 is sided with T111. Sure. And that's also rotting now. It's, these are all so there may be a products. facade on the building needs to be done. So we have a couple little, pro we have additional projects that will, but that was brought up. And we actually asked the um, Kwanis last year if they, you know, were going to, you know, reminded well, us what taking. I was them. asking, but where it's now town property. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, so, so no, they brought it up to us last year, and we 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 knew we had to get to it. And the purchase of all this new equipment now with playground companies comes with a maintenance plan. We don't need to purchase that separately, or it doesn't cost any additional money. The purchase of the equipment includes it for about 20 years, which is nice. Great. Are there any more questions from the audience? Um, Just so you know, uh, the the photos you're looking at the. Uh, the renderings that you're looking at that Julia passed out, those were all presented last year in the presentation. Harry, if I could just make one last comment. Of course. This is probably not the, it's, um, the bandstand's going to have a, a lot of baseball used on it this year because Pembroke's gone and the football field's gone for the use for next month. So there's a lot of young kids going to be using that. But they're going to be off it before the concert series. There's now, you'll see that there's a temporary fence out there. I don't, I can't guarantee that when there is a, there's a one and a half week time span between the kids get off this year and the bandstand. We will try to get as much grass on it as possible. <laughs> but I'm telling you, it, this is going to be a, a terrible year for sports because of the field issues that we're faced with now. So if they can bear with us for a year or two, we'll get back to some normal, hopefully we'll get back to some normalcy in our, just people don't realize how many games you know, they all talk about when they were kids. When they were kids, they didn't play organized sports at four, five, six, seven, eight, nine years old like they do now. So people just bear with us on this year because if you don't know what the issues are, you should probably get the paper because there's a lot of issues going on now with sports and fields. So um, thanks. Sure. It's going to be probably a couple of bad years for, for sports. Yeah. Yeah. So things get going. <coughs> a lot of things in the, in the pipeline, but unfortunately. And speaking of things in the pipeline, hopefully. <laughs> Uh, Peter Burns about the Westry Fields restoration and rehabilitation proposal. Yes, thank you very much. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm Pete Burns and I'm a representative of the Georgetown Youth Soccer Association and Jim's comments were a perfect uh, segue into, into uh, 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 presenting this project. Uh, next slide, please. Okay. We, we actually haven't seen the slides yet at home. Oh, okay. 
but now they're seeing them. Right, so it's called the Westfield Fields Restoration and Rehabilitation Proposal by the Georgetown Youth Soccer Association. Uh, so some background. Um, so the town youth soccer program, that's all the kids who play youth soccer in town, has uh, relied on the use of West Street Fields for decades now. Uh, about 400 kids play uh, soccer in town and use these fields ages 10 through 16. Uh, there's an increased demand on, on this uh, parcel as more kids uh, become involved in soccer and other sports. And because, as Jim mentioned, we've got uh, school construction, uh, another uh, increase in, in, uh, in usage, we, uh, they're, they're looking for other places to play now that because they've been dis displaced from the schools and other areas. Next slide, please. So we, um, we're using this facility uh, for the entire youth soccer program, with some exceptions. Um, and we're, we haven't had a lot of time to uh, do any kind of updating or anything like that uh, on this property. And so we identified some of the problems that, that uh, we thought, as a group, needed to be uh, addressed. So uh, some of those are limited improvements to the fields and parking area over time, unsafe and inadequate parking, limited accessibility for emergency vehicles, poor field conditions, which require a restoration plan, and an increased demand for field access, as I just discussed earlier. So our approach really is to um, try to get some money under the Community Preservation Act to restore and rehabilitate the fields in, on West Street. And uh, three phases, we're just coming up with a plan here. Phase one would be sort of the engineering permitting and the feasibility of a project, working with the water department and other boards. This uh, facility is owned by the uh, town water department. It's uh, adjacent to the uh, water treatment plant. Phase two would be the rehabilitation of the parking lot, which is a real um, immediate need, some real problems there. And then phase three, perhaps some field rehabilitation and maybe some lighting. We'll see what we can do. So the first phase would be um, to request um, $10,000 this year through the community preservation funding. Since we don't really know what we're up against or really what kind of uh, work we could uh, potentially do there because it's water department land and there's other uh, environmental um, uh, factors there, we didn't want to go out and spend the time uh, doing a, uh, hiring an engineer and getting a plan and um, having all these hard numbers and things like that until we went through and really looked at the feasibility of actually what, what can we actually do there. So uh, we submitted a project uh, suggestion form to the uh, CPC uh, and that was approved by this group and of course and now we're talking about it now. Um, we've since talked to the water department to get their input. Uh, certainly anything we do we'd have to, um, um, we'd be bound to whatever the water uh, regulations and what the water department would, would uh, require of us. Uh, in consideration of the water quality and the, uh, uh, the situation there with the place right next to the water, uh, water facility. Uh, so we'd be looking at engineering, permitting, and cost analysis, trying to get an idea of what we can do and how much it would cost. And uh, the, the initial focus would really be on the, on the parking lot improvements. That's the real dire need right away, um, trying to get that fixed. And, um, and then kind of looking at what it would cost maybe if we could uh, do something to the fields, some kind of rehabilitation program to the fields. Uh, and, uh, and maybe some lighting to extend the, the usage of the fields. So phase two would be the parking lot improvements. So expand the parking area to accommodate the increased traffic and the usage. Um, uh, add a second access point from the road to the lot to facilitate the traffic flow and, and safety. And our results would, uh, we'd expect that it would reduce the safety hazards in the lot and on the street. We've got a lot of uh, people that now, because of uh, there's a limited access entry and exit way that goes in there, a little dirt um, driveway, people are parking on the street, so it makes it hard for cars to get back and forth. People are crossing the street. Um, there's no real shoulder there. There's no curb. There's no sidewalk or anything like that. Uh, so it makes it really tough getting in and out of there. And on any given Saturday, if anyone hasn't been down there, um, it's, uh, you know, there's cars in and out, and uh, it's crowded. Uh, so we're hoping that it will reduce the safety hazards in the lot and on the street, uh, improve emergency vehicle access. Right now, if you had a full parking lot in there, it would be very cars parked on either side of the street and perhaps traffic. It might be very difficult to get an uh, emergency vehicle in there if you needed to. So that would, we'd hope that that would address that and uh, also improve and extend the life of the parking surface. Right now, uh, Peter Durkee, his name comes up again. He's uh, been able to help us out um, every spring because we go down there. We had ice probably six inches of ice on that up until about a week and a half ago on that parking lot. 
and um, and then finally it melted, and uh, they just had to go in and kind of tamp it down a little bit and keep everyone off the surface until it dried out. Unfortunately, we were able to um, open it up on Saturday for the opening day of our season this past Saturday. So, but it's tenuous every every year. So looking ahead, um, uh, looking at potential um, imp uh, improvements or uh, rehabilitation to the to the fields and the and maybe some lighting some low impact approaches to improving the playing and safety conditions on the fields, extending the life of the fields, considering uh, the water quality and the endangered species needs um, at the West Street facility. Everyone knows, I think, that there's uh, uh, Blanding's turtles down there that uh, nest in that area, so we'd certainly have to work through the um, state natural heritage and endangered species program to um, uh, address any, any issues involved with that. Uh, and perhaps expand the usage time of the fields by installing the lights uh, and just um, increasing the benefits of the, of the town through improvements to a currently occupied site. We're there now. Um, fields are at a premium. Uh, open space is at a premium. It just seems to make sense to at least invest $10,000 to see what kind of opportunities we have um, at this existing facility. Next slide, please. So some short-term and long-term goals, get the phase one funding approved at town meeting. We're asking for $10,000, a very reasonable sum to just to get started and kind of poke the surface and see what, what opportunities might be available in consideration of all the constraints there on that site. Um, get approval and buy-in and input from the water department on feasibility and outcomes, what we could potentially do. Um, I met on April 1st with the water board and also the water superintendent. Uh, they um, seemed... Um, amenable to the plan and to looking looking ahead to looking into the potential opportunities there. Um, they are looking at um, a new water treatment facility that would probably fall between where their existing facility is and where our parking lot is, so that was one of their only concerns about whether or not that would be um, um, compromise our current parking situation. Um, and uh, We'd have to file with the Endangered Species Program. Uh, we'd have to get work estimates and permits for the parking lot, the field rehabilitation, and the lighting. So probably have to hire an engineer. Um, may have to go through the planning board, depending on what type of um, plan we come forward with. Uh, probably would also have to file now, after talking with the Water Department, uh, the State Department of Environmental Protection, because we're in a water recharge area zone. So the more and more we go through this, the, the uh, the more things come up, but it, um, but anyway, the, but the this short amount of money, rather than trying to get everything all up front and hoping we get the project to go through, we're trying to just see what the options are. What you're trying to do is what Marblehead has kind of already done, so that might be a good place to. They actually used organic tea on their well fields, and they did it about ten years ago, and they've had good results. And there's been a number of articles written. They planted that. Right. Yes, probably yeah. the exact same thing that we're trying to do, they had done. And the results from what the article said was positive. So That's good. Um, there's going to be a lot of people, as you talk to rehabilitation, what type of rehabilitation or what. Um, and as far as the parking lot, you can also do the community gardens while they're up there doing that because they're in the same area. And we've already <laughs> approved money for that. And that's been sitting there now for many years. That's true. Yeah. Um, and before someone gets hit up there on the community garden on, on an interstate highway, they should probably the same time we might be able to lump those two highway those two parking lot projects in as one because I was up there I was driving by there again today and there was two cars and they were getting out of the car as people were going by 50 miles an hour yeah and it's just a matter of time before someone gets taken out they really need to fix that area up you really need to fix that area up and it's really going to take someone's death to do it because we've been talking about it now for 10 years and yeah. nothing's been done how much well, money is in the kitty it's five six thousand oh so, uh, I think there's more than that. Fifteen? Yeah, the, uh, the the Concom was was given money for that a yeah, long, man, long, time, long ago. time ago. Yeah. So there's money. The Concom now has money to fix they the parking lot at, at the community oh. gardens on Andover Street. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Great. And it, it, it's it, I know what you're saying. It's dangerous down on West Street, but I think it's more dangerous at the on 133. And it's it, I mean I it's what's it going to take? You right. know? Yeah, I know. I, that's a good point. So over time, I think long term, just to wrap this up, um, <coughs> we would, uh, uh, if we get the $10,000, do some kind of exploratory study to see uh, what options are available to us, a feasibility study, if you will, uh, and then um, maybe try to get um, a firmer grasp on what the project would be going forward. Maybe it's all those elements. Maybe it's none of them. Maybe it's just the parking lot. Maybe it's something else. Uh, 
and then uh, come before the CPC again and try to um, put another proposal in with some harder numbers and a little bit more um, structure to the to the um, to the uh, proposal uh, and uh, implement those improvements in the following year. <coughs> Next slide, please. And so, excuse me. So I've just um, added some slides, and of course, this is a uh, overhead um, Google Earth photograph, uh, and the parking lot is. Um, the correct surface, but the cars are fake. Uh, but you can see on the left is the water uh, treatment facility. Um, you can barely even see the access from West Street, which is at the bottom there. Mm. It's kind of obscured by the trees. Uh, it's a slight little driveway in there. And then you can see in the, um, at the top of the picture is the field surface. And then where the cars are, that's the parking lot. That's a sort of you a packed dirt ponds. lot. The turtles are going underneath the fence. Next, uh, next slide, please. Sorry, keep 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 and so this is sort of um, just a, <laughs> no, this isn't to scale and it's not an engineered plan or anything like that. This is just kind of an overlay of, um, of a little bit more parking space that would, um, that, you know, we could envision by removing some of the trees between the parking lot and the, um, and the uh, street and perhaps another uh, access to keep the traffic flowing out in and out. And you can see that on the bottom left. But certainly, you know, we'd, uh, we'd work with the Water Department and engineers and uh, the Conservation Commission. Uh, uh, we talked with Steve Przymski, and he didn't believe that there was any wetlands up there, or any river floodplain or anything like that that would cause us to have to file with the, in the town's uh, wetlands protection bylaw. Mm -hmm. Next slide. That's just the sign going in. This was two weeks ago when I was up there. Um, next slide, please. And that's kind of looking down toward the water treatment plant, down toward the river. And you can see um, that's the parking situation on the street. So people aren't just using that lot. It's insufficient. So anything that's dripping off the cars um, is dripping down that hill into the river. And, um, and it's a narrow street with people parking on either side. Uh, it's treacherous. Usually on both sides. Right. It's treacherous. Yeah. So next slide. This is uh, um, the entrance and exit uh, with the gate. And um, so you can see if there was cars parked on either side or people trying to get in and out and you needed to get an ambulance in there, you are um, you're in, in tough shape. We brought that up years ago to, to widen the poles and right. we were denied. I mean, we would even just consider widening that to the point where you could get um, you know, ease, ease of access. This is looking, um, the reverse view, turning around and looking at the playing fields and at the parking lot. Um, you can see up to two weeks ago, I mean, certainly this has been a bad winter, but. Um, every, the snow's gone from everywhere else, but this parking lot keeps the snow. It's like the North Pole right there. Next slide, please. And uh, this is the um, handicap parking, and this is the um, uh, emergency vehicle access point to get onto the fields, which is, um, you know, not, not great. Pretty sad. Yeah. Next slide. Then this is just looking um, between the driveway and down toward the... Uh, out to the street. So this is what's between the parking lot and the street. Some, um, you know, it's land that's been uh, moved around and, you know, nothing, uh, you know, no real, it's not virgin uh, forest by any means. Uh, you can see where the land's been uh, moved around there and just a, an idea of the type of trees that would be removed if we had the opportunity to expand the lot. Next slide. Uh, there's been some work done here before. You can see that the, it's, uh, this file um, with the DEP and also with the Natural Heritage and Endangered Species Program, so we'd have to um, file with those again. Yeah, that was when they did the, um, the loop. Yeah. Off of the, I think it was Commissioner's Wall? Commissioner's right. Wall, was it? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So something's been permitted there before. Oh, yeah. So uh, that's it. And um, any questions? Hi. Yeah. Um, how long is how long has the water department leased this land to the town? Like, is is there a lease that's going to maybe run up, or are they able to take it back at any time and say? Well, they own it. They own it all right. Uh, I if, the if, water I, if I can correct you, j just if you really look at the deed, you own it, and I own it, right. and every other inhabitant of this town owns it. Mm -hmm. The management and control of the parcel has been given to the water department. So the water department can't decide at any time that they want to use that land after you've maybe worked really hard on this whole project and they decide that they need that land for water department treatment stuff? 
they could, and that was one of the water department's um, concerns because they are considering uh, building a facility somewhere near there. Um, but I think, um, you know, we're on borrowed time there. So I think what, we're, what we would propose and ultimately come up with would not be some kind of heavily <coughs> infrastructure or, um, you know, construction heavy kind of thing. We're not going to be able to do that anyway because it's a water recharge area and it's, a, it's in, inhabited by an endangered species. So we're limited and we know that and we're not trying to um, uh, pass one by the goalie on this one. We're just trying to see what, 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 are, the, what are the limits and um, what, what can we do to sort of extend the life um, on a facility like this because we're already there, we've been there, the need's increasing, every place else is under construction so everyone else, all the other sports teams are looking to West Street now uh, to expand and, and get their playing time in. And of course, that's only a temporary thing but, um, but it's certainly a long-term need and you know, this $10,000 might be well spent because it might make us realize that um, we can't do anything there and maybe the next step is to um, look at other parcels or moving our soccer facility someplace else. But as we know, we've, we've seen this with other projects and things like that, there's other obstacles and there's limited upland and, and uh, suitable areas for that. Sure. From my point, if you could increase the parking, okay, I'm sorry. There's two fields now, right? It could be three. Because it, it didn't used to be three. There was fields three fields. A long time ago. Yeah, it's um, it's a it's a full size um regulation field, and that's a smaller size for U12 um level kids. Mm -hmm. And then there's uh, an upper uh, one way in back that's raised up, and that's just a smaller practice field. It's not big enough it to. It could be to there was three fields. There's three legitimate soccer fields in the bottom <coughs> if you put them almost line to line. From my standpoint, if you could get the parking and just so just an organic tea material down on, because there's no loam on that field, it's sand. Right. It would allow mm -hmm. the grass to grow so much thicker and healthier. It would increase the the <coughs> number of hours you could use that field dramatically. Those are the kinds of ideas that we're tr going to I mean, try to explore. Those are like you said. We we know we're not going to be able to use insecticides or any type of mm -hmm. fertilizers, but because there's no loam there, you can't do anything. Right. The grass just doesn't really right. you know. You have to be able to figure out what you can do. But exactly. if you could do there those, has to be some kind of a balance. If you could do those two strong. things, that would be a huge benefit to the town. Well, right, and it wouldn't be any. You're not going to be moving any dirt around or right. disturbing any soil or expanding your area. Um, it's just um, trying to um, make better use of what you've got, and in consideration of the environmental needs and the water recharge needs and everything else that that, that plan is there for. And um, you know, one thing we said to the water department was. Geez, we went down and put a new brass valve on the irrigation system and started putting water on the field, and boy, did, didn't that help. <laughs> so just yeah, even exactly. minor little adjustments like that, um, that costs some money. But those are the kinds of things, if you, um, if you can just work with what you've got a little bit more effectively, all of a sudden you see results without even, you know. Yeah, I spent the morning at FW Web paying for that on my credit card, taking a half day off of work. And then it sat up there for two months and yeah. finally got put in. So, yeah, I know about that valve. <laughs> that took a half a day of, half a day of right. vacation for that one. Well, thanks so, a lot. You know. <laughs> and in case anybody's wondering, the GAA and the, and the park and rec worth hand in hand, and they have been doing so for God only knows how yeah. long. Yeah. I don't even, right. wouldn't even yeah. venture, I guess. It's a good, it's a good partnership. Well, so. good luck with the project. The fields need to be improved yeah. desperately, right. and so does the parking lot. So I hope the town votes for this. Thank you. It needs to be done. Thanks a lot. Is there any other questions about this? I don't have any questions. Just uh, so to say uh, you know, that th thanks to the board for the uh, you know, work you've done on, uh, on, on the Pond Street project and all the other projects, too. Oh, thank well, you. Appreciate that. Th thank, you for thank you for thanking us. Uh, this following is a summary of all the recommended CPC projects. Uh, if we can see the PowerPoint. Um, <laughs> and this is the projects and the costs that are associated with them. These will be voted at the annual town meeting on May 5th, 2014. Uh, just to summarize, the Affordable Housing Trust Grant is $100,000. Union Cemetery Flagpole and Historic Preservation is $2,800. High Merch Flagpole is $3,900. Pond Street Vista View Restoration is $62,000. The bond costs are a quarter of a million. The Rehabilitation of American Legion Park Phase 2 is $29,800 and the Georgetown Youth Soccer Association West Street Field Rehabilitation is 10000 Total appropriation to $458,500, and that completes the presentation of the CPC Committee projects for 2014. And if everybody's read that,
We want to thank you for watching the presentation. Oh, oh, get the screen back. Get the screen back. One more time. One more time, Kat. Put it back on because that says Monday, May 5th, 2014, which is an important night. Go to annual town meeting. And now we're good. And plug the website. And folks, we're going to have to hold a little bit of a meeting. If we can kill the um, overhead screen. Um, pay the bills. I don't know how we do that. Sure. Um, are you going to kind of try to just lump all the CPC recommendations under one article together like you did last year? We are going to encourage the moderator mm -hmm. to um, put them under a consent, a consent calendar, as we always do every year. Uh, and um, at her behest, because it's entirely her decision to do so, she usually does. That's what she usually does. That's what she usually does. Uh, we're also going to have another, um, uh, there's going to be a, another uh, Warren article that we've added in to uh, change the, uh, the CPC bylaw to make it more in line. Uh, remember I mentioned the 2012 uh, changes that were made at the legislature? That change uh, changed the wording. And right now, we're sort of out of kilter with our local bylaw and our state bylaw. And what we're trying to do is bring them together. I don't know if that actually made it to the town warrant or not, or if the selectmen did or did not uh, put that on. I'm sorry, you had a question for selectmen? What was that? Uh, yeah, did, did that actually make it to the warrant, Gary? Um, the CPC article that changed the bylaw? Uh, we did not make, um, yeah, we didn't make any article changes. We didn't go over and approve them. But we did not take, as a matter of fact, last night we added two more articles. Oh, okay. So as far as I know, guys, it, guys, I can't hear Gary, I'm sorry. Sorry, no, it, right. it, it, um, it, it may not be recommended to be moved forward, but it, um, I believe it is on the warrant. Great, that's great. Um, thank you very much, thank you so much. Um, we have a few orders of business, if I can um, get a motion to pay the bills. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to pay the bills. Second. Seconded by Gary. Uh, reviewing them quickly. And first and foremost is Town of Salisbury. What you're seeing here is um, basically the the same thing that we've seen another 30 times. I now have the, the paperwork to back it up. I didn't have it earlier tonight. This is the uh, invoice. Uh, this is the rec path. It's 228.66 for our. Um, this is like, uh, if I may, a payment schedule. Is that what this yes. is? Yes. Um, it's not a schedule where it varies all over the place. Okay. It's, uh, yeah. Sometimes it's hundreds. Sometimes it's thousands. It's essentially a percentage. I think it's a 41 percent of the total bill for Mass Highway that comes from the um, I think it was a $718,000 grant that was done and these are the matching funds that go with it. But uh, as you can see, um, what we basically look for is that the rec path uh, approved it and signed off. Okay. They're asking that we pay it. They're the ones that check this out. Um, we good with that? Yeah. Any questions? Yeah. No. Nope. Um, next is Gale Associates. Um, you'll see a letter from the um, from uh, Joan Laporto from the school department, March 28, 2014, uh, asking for that. It's the uh, invoice from Gale Associates for design work uh, for the high school field re rehabilitation. Uh -huh. That's 5342 On that same bills payable, uh, if you flip forward again, uh, you'll see another letter for the high school field rehabilitation, 1071.94, and uh, that is for soils testing uh, at the high school field. Mm -hmm. Maybe you should move that to the Board of Select. Um, that's all something that has to be done. Uh, and the school committee, which I believe is acting as There'll be additional. There'll be additional soil testing as well. Oh, I'm sure there already has been. We just haven't gotten the bill yet. The figure I thought I heard last night was, it's all, it's, you know, I thought this got presented as a very low cost thing, but I thought last night I was hearing ten thousand dollars. 
I, I, I think we're we testing. I think we're told six, an additional six. So the total okay. may be 10,000. That might be what, yeah. Is okay. it first I was hearing, oh, it's only $150 a hole. Right, but there was extra testing mm -hmm. requ requested, and I don't know if that was from the conservation or the select. Yeah, the, <coughs> like a lot of holes. So there was some. Wow. So was Dirty some dirt's th never cheap. <laughs> Um, and last but not least, uh, advance notice advertising, which is the uh, another letter from the uh, from the school department. Uh, this is for, however, this is not for the uh, turf field. This is for the pearly. If you remember years yep. ago, we did the historic yeah. restoration, and this was for a um, uh, a legal ad that had to be put in the paper. So yep. request. So they think they're going to do that this summer. Uh, this is it. Only references the legal ad. Right, okay. It's the only thing. So you got to assume. Well, it's not. You hope to assume that it would be something done this summer while the kids are up. Well, this is for bidding, right? For yeah. This was At least the bid's on going the, out. Yep, yep. On the roof. So, yep. don't know when it'll happen, but the bid's got to go out and well, got to get approved for us, right? Last summer, the, uh, the what's his name was done the front entrance. So, mm -hmm. it looks pretty nice. Yeah. Uh, any more questions about the bills? Everybody good? All in favor of uh, authorizing those bills, say aye. 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 Motion carries. Yeah. Any opposed? Motion carries. Unanimously. Great. Uh, correspondence. Okay. It's going to get a little deep. Um, flipping forward, guys. Start, well, start, well, start, start at the back. <laughs> Pardon me? Yeah, start at the bottom, by all means. Uh, but actually, you know what? If we could... Start getting these and getting some signatures, Jimmy. Yeah, I think you're gonna have to sign one, two, three times. Okay, should be three times. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, this what you're looking at here, starting from the back, starting all the way from the bottom, of page two or three. Um, I think maybe the best way to go with this is for you folks to maybe take these homes get a little bit late. Uh, basically, what you're gonna find through here is. Um, Essentially, uh, the bottom line of it is Mary and uh, the town treasurer and the town accountant were asking about the $250,000, what it was for right, specifically. Yeah. Um, I went through that. Jackie went back over, I think on the second, on th page third, the third page. She reviewed the numbers of what her best estimates are of what we're actually going to be incurring in 2015, possibly 16, um, fiscal year. And I got back to her, a lot of back and forth here, a lot of questions about if DOR has given any guidance to the town as far as assisting them in, in keeping that important separation when they're doing the turf field. Remember the, the, the restoration with CPC monies can't mix with the purchase and the installation of that rug. That has to yeah. be kept separate. Uh, I asked them basically at this point, there is no answer to that yet. And DOR hasn't given any guidance at all on that. But, uh, evidently, DOR has given a green light to the idea of the $250,000. <laughs> Surprise you that DOR didn't give any guidance, Paul. Um, give it a read. I think you'll find it a little informative. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Appreciate that. Hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully. Oops, I clear some things up. Um, well, clarified a lot with, uh, with Mary. Uh, treasure our health. Uh, the funds are going to go into the, once the bond does go through. The monies will go into the CPC account as they have to in the chapter 44. At that point, then what has to happen is Mary, uh, excuse me, Jackie needs to move it from there into the general fund so it can be paid. A lot of details there. Probably a little too much for nine o'clock at night after a long day of work. Um, we've done the project presentations. Is there any business that any committee member would like to bring up? Just to, if, if mm -hmm. I may, mm -hmm. because I saw a contract downstairs in the Board of Selectman's office. I think it was to do with, for the park and rec, to do with... Um, East Main Street? Yeah, I think it was something to do with, they had to, you had to change your... Um, Engineer? Yes. And yes. so they had felt they had to drop a new contract. Yeah, so, we were. And, no, no, but just let me. So, so I, I, I briefly mentioned to Mike, and, and <coughs> this was probably a good 
point to say it because in the Board of Selectmen again last night made it clear that anything that they stick a shovel in the ground on, they feel, or a majority of the board feels that it should be tested. Mm -hmm. And so I met, mentioned that to Mike. I, I said going forward as we're doing these contracts, if that's the feeling of the board and, and the town, then we're going to have to start adding something into all of these things. You know, I said, it, I, says, I don't know that we want to do a, a contract and then three months down the road, again, find out, oh, we, we want to do some testing, and all of a sudden the price of everything goes up considerably. So, Gary, are you referring to, you're referring to East Main I, Street? I think that was probably something Street? that's being funded by CPC. So, well, well, what's the question, Harry? Is being, East Main Street is being yes, funded by CPC, yes. and I can so, also tell you that so that's why I one think of the important things to remember about that is the, the purchase of that land was done with CPC money. Yes. And over and above that, town council had a uh, phase one assessment done. They insisted upon it before okay. we could. Uh, do you remember the Pembroke? Uh, so the Pembroke had a phase, phase one, one assessment. They, they do soil and testing. that phase one assessment came out and showed and said you need soil testing. The phase one assessment that was done to, during the purchase of that okay. parcel of land didn't say anything about that. Well, excellent. So at least on that project, that, that to me will be very helpful, Harry, because if, if that Absolutely. does come up, I can. I can say that that soil up there has been tested. Uh, well, oh. it hasn't been tested. Oh, it the has phase one assessment didn't ask for testing. Oh, okay. Is what, what happened. Okay. Unlike Pembroke, where the phase one assessment said you should test. Well, we didn't have to do, we did not have to do the testing. We did not have to do the testing for the turf field either. Okay. It was just mm -hmm. the, the school committee and the, and the majority of the board of selectmen felt that it should be tested, and and the board, of, the majority of the board of selectmen, uh, again stated last night. I forget why, but that they felt that. Oh, I think it was because Peter, Peter asked a question. He said, you know, we got to get the somebody in here to help us and find out what to do because if, if we do this for every project, you're adding a considerable amount to every project. So right. From mm -hmm. the um, right. did Park and Rec vote on doing something like that, or have you guys had a chance to discuss it yet? We haven't had a chance to discuss it. Um, you may want to, because that's what I'm saying. I, I, I don't want you guys to go along doing your project and then find out later that the Board of Selectmen or the feel that you should do the testing. Mm -hmm. I, mean, we, I mean, these are questions that need to be answered as a group, I think, as a whole. Mm -hmm. Well, it's going to be answered. Right. Is, yeah. It is a concern. Are we going to, what, what we're going to test and what we're not going to test is important because a school someone has to go to, should, you know, you could say a public place is the railroad bed, the American Legion Park. West yeah. Street, mm -hmm. you know, you want to test the American Legion Park? Want to test the rec now? Well, huh, so, well, that's what I mean. Yeah, so, no, I'm right. saying, well, the, the feeling last night was anything the uh, shovel goes in the Yeah, okay. Yeah, I wouldn't so. test them all at once. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I wouldn't test them all at once. That's, well, shouldn't I, you use that's it? sort of why I'm, I'm no, I mean, you know. I, mean I, I feel calm. I mean, the, I think it's there's some unproven science that it's based on a lot on the areas with ledge, which you see in s certain places. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've and I don't see ledge as much all, on yeah. East Main Street, so I'm a little bit more confident being a sand base that you wouldn't see. But I, I, I'm, I'm not a soil scientist, so I could be talking totally. But I have to say, you got to look at the history of American Legion. Okay. <laughs> and well, and also there could be now a third factor as to what you were talking about with the emails, Harry, because the Board of Selectmen did put a placeholder for I think up to two hundred thousand dollars additional money for the turf project mm -hmm. on the special town meeting warrant. So there could be another right, money but that, that you don't be, want to mix it up with. But that this, wouldn't be saying. CPC money. That would be. That, yeah, I agree. Yeah. But I mean, right. that, that, as Absolutely. you were saying, how do you keep them all set? That's, right, that's it's, it's going to be quite challenging. Yeah, the, you know, the, I mean, the, his it, the contract I mean, is going to have to know, do. I two voted to pay this bill, but it's very reluctantly. It, I mean, should that come out of CPC funds? when it really wasn't an initial part of the plan. Mm -hmm. It got added in by the school committee and the board of selectmen to do that. So well, if the school but committee felt as though it was due it diligence to test. It is part of the test. project. So. Yeah, if the school committee felt it was due diligence yeah. to test, I'm, I'm, I'm not so going to second guess them. Was that, I haven't been privy, is that the final number they said it's going to take to clean it up? They haven't got the final number. I thought that was just a oh. test. Oh. I mean. Oh, oh, the, oh, the 200,000. I, I've been on a couple of cleanup place. projects, and place. until you dig, start digging in the dirt, you have no clue. You're just I know, guessing. I'm saying, I'm saying Carol felt, uh, Carol you're just Jacobs. guessing, so you start digging. 
felt rather confident from the testing and, and, and the continued testing that there may only be a small area okay. that they have to deal with that the rest of it might be. I mean, yeah, to me, you, if you're hauling a certain amount of dirt out of there, a contractor is going to be making money on that if it's... Well, 18 know, he's inches be, he's, he's of that surface has to come out else. anyway. One way or the other, yeah, 18 remember, inches has to be But if it's removed. contaminated, now he's not he's making not making any money. Yeah. So well, as soon as you tested yeah. it, he's gone from making a profit to making yeah, a you, loss. Yeah, it costs you money to, to get right. rid of I, I, the I soil agree. like that. It costs you to get rid of any soil. you got to yeah. truck it out. you got to find a place to dump it. Yeah, but typically you can get... But like... At, at yeah, West Street, uh, they, they ended up, uh, what's the, the common thing we, what, what's the chemical or the, the poison we have in the soil? Oh, from um, from the uh, down here off of uh, Tricycle? Just, just, just put uh, this thing, no, it's not, uh, what the hell is it? Arsenic? Uh, Arsenic, yeah. yes. Because uh, West Street had that same thing, and, and what we told uh, the contractor he had to do is go out and do some samples around town and find out what the ambient is. Mm -hmm. You can't, you're not going to fix this whole country. It's a background. Yeah, it's a background level. Maybe, so maybe, it, maybe should, we should ask, uh, the, the Board of Selectmen should ask Steve Prozimski to show the report that was done for uh, the West Street. Um, Tid's Junkyard. Tid's, Tid's Junkyard, junkyard right. yeah. Because um, <clears throat> one of the reasons the DEP gave a final sign-off on that uh, and approval of it and closed it out was that uh, the, ambient the, was, level of, yeah. the level of cleaner, the level of arsenic that was there in the soil at that point was the same as the background which was everywhere in town so you're you're, you're shoveling oh look at it i i've got i, I probably have I, I got a pack at that thing because i asked to see it when this first came up but, but, and, this was this was west street it, every this was at the every very spill end of in it. town was on this report <laughs> and, and every yeah, and, and yeah. tids was yeah was on there, yeah. I, I believe. Yeah. But this this was at the very end at the at the the LSP. Yeah. Right, right. The LSP and, and all they had to do was go out and prove the the <laughs> background was was at a certain level. And, so they and did some testing on the background. Actually, they didn't, uh, because okay. they decided they 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 would they ran out of money. Oh. Well. So, but I mean, the the bottom line is the ambient was was appears to be about the same as what we found at Tids. Mm -hmm. so. Same everywhere. Well, I, I I feel if it's naturally occurring, it's. What are you going to do? Well, I think we I think everybody's become better informed. Yeah, we yeah that's why it I'm. It takes a little bit of time before because, they. You know, the CPC is paying for some of these projects, and and so it's, it's, it could dramatically. Because even I mean, it, you know you you wouldn't want to see because of that. I, I mean, if the, you know the turf field could have potentially been a gone issue. Uh, so. One of the things I find amazing, we went to the notice of intent for this conservation commission, and most of the members didn't even know we were putting in a turf field in town. So some of us have been informed for two years or a year and a half what's going on and the ins and outs. You're going to a committee who's going to make a decision in two meetings, and they had no prior knowledge that it was even, you know. So, so I mean, there's a, there's a lot of questions on the turf field, and they're all legitimate. Plastic, beads, yeah. um, you know, the, the handling of the water, how the water infil infiltration. I mean, they're going to have to get up to speed pretty fast because we're requesting that they are going to have to get up to speed pretty fast. And in some respects, it's not fair because, I mean, most of us spent six months with those whole things about what types of plastics, the old history compared to the new history, how the turf fields are made. Right. There's a ton of education. And if you go through, like I told them, don't read anything from 2007 be before because that's the old stuff. Well, I was surprised, yeah. Jim, that it was moving as quick as it was. That's why you I'm put it sure. on the special town meeting warrant yeah. because that would allow the money to be there now, where otherwise it wouldn't be there till after June. Gary, it has to, it has to move so, fast. Yeah. If you look, unless you want to close all programs for a year, year and a half, it's gonna have. I mean, no one wants anything to move fast, but it's gonna have no, to. No, I I thought yeah, that it wasn't no. happening until school got out, but uh, but they're looking well, we're, at it possibly being done by July first. Well, July, yeah. it all depends. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Uh, um, motion to adjourn. Oh, was that you, Gary? The Second. I thought you were. Yeah, right. Are we off the air, Harry? No, uh, we're, we're we just I just heard a second from Peter Burns to adjourn. Third. And is the all in favor? Say aye. 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 Motion carries. Adjournment is at what is that? Nine ten. PM. Yep. Hi, uh, good night, everybody, and please make it to annual town meeting.
What is that? May 5th? Tuesday, so Mo- May 5th. No, Mo- Monday, May, Monday, May 5th, 5th, 2014. And actually, High School. And can I put a plug in? Go for it. Plug it. There's actually uh, there's a, there's a collection for uh, the pantries in town. So bring your, bring your canned goods and uh, whatever you got that uh, you can share with your less fortunate uh, neighbors. And good night, everybody, and have a happy Easter uh, or holiday or uh, Patriots Day, right? Yeah. Have have a happy Patriots Day. Good night, everybody. Okay.